Now, um, this uh, is still the case uh, as uh, wealth control. This is uh, still the case by the same reason. If, uh, if T is bigger than H, the toxic amount. And uh, so th this was the result uh, of the <coughs> um, And that was the main reason uh, come imposes, uh, this one of the main reasons he imposes this condition. I should also say uh, while I'm here that if you have this condition, if you have this condition T bigger than H, then I don't need anything to impose on G. So G would be any reduction for this piece there. So, uh, all these conditions will be automatic because we only interested with in the Lie algebra and the Lie algebra will be the sum of the right sub algebra plus cent and everything will be nice. And so if, if you're only interested in the case when P is large, then you can uh, just disregard all these assumptions. <coughs> so, um, however, uh, when, P, uh, when P is uh, less than H, let's say, uh, uh, this is no longer true. The result is uh, no longer true. Um, and, and you can see this just by uh, by observing that E and F, if E is regular, then this F and this L to triple doesn't have to be conjugated to E. So it may happen that E is B, but F is so pretty small. And so therefore, its centralizer will be just too big for this to hold. So, and this, uh, this difficulty can be overcome if we change the slabs. So this is due to Springer. So Springer, based on the result of Spalten's uh, replaced uh, this slice, E plus GF, by what he is called uh, uh, good slice. <coughs> so a good slice uh, is just E plus V, where V is a homogeneous subspace, so it is contained as it should be in the negative part of the gradient of G I. That's a gradient coming from, from the torus mm -hmm. associated with this triple. It's a graded subspace here which has the right dimension, so the dimension of V is equal to L, and then everything goes. But this base, this is based on earlier work by Smallness. So now we see that uh, the, the differentials are linearly independent uh, on a large set uh, uh, of reactants in G, and therefore Scriatin's result uh, applies. So then by Scriatin, by the theorem of Scriatin I mentioned, And we have that the infinitesimal invariance will be uh, generated by these powers and by, by these homogeneous invariants. This also works for SO2 in this case. So if you had problems solving this uh, example, that uh, the exercise that I gave, here is the answer. So everything, of course, will, of course, for SO2, there will be no complications related with that. <coughs> where, so the, here, where do we need that the slice is good? The, uh, uh, slice is called good if, uh, well, yes. it should be sliced. I mean, the properties of slice that you need that B intersection is uh, E bracket G is zero. That's very crucial. But uh, so this, 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 uh, for that, we need, need the slice. And it should be a homogeneous. How is it used by Scriabin? Well, requires that if this uh, Jacobian has for dimension bigger than 22, then this holds. That's one, that's a statement of Scriabin's theorem that I wrote. Oh. So we found that uh, well, Scriabin's result uh, doesn't require anything about this F1 as well, provided that you have this property of the Jacobian condition, which one has to change. <coughs> Oh, good, slice, huh? how good slice implies this condition. Well, it's a by, by, by rational isomorphism. So what we have is that uh, this F is taken to the smaller slice. 
uh, to AL. Uh, it's an isomorphism variety, therefore it is isomorphism tangent space. So the differentials will be linearly independent. It's an isomorphism of variety. So it induces an isomorphism on tangent spaces at C. And V has dimension L. So. so the morphism is given by, well, by this formula. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, so uh, I need to introduce some notations of, uh, of the <coughs> under our assumption. Uh, so we have the uh, G is isomorphic to G star. So we may identify, although it may be a bit confusing, now identify G and G star. And, uh, and we know, and we have this Milner's map. Uh, a filtration preserving uh, <coughs> map between U of G uh, and S of G. This is something that I mentioned last time, and this is a uh, G equivalent, G equivalent uh, isomorphism, uh, linear isomorphism of G mod. and also as a Lie algebra. So now, um, so what does it mean? Uh, we know what, what the invariants are here. Um, and um, so we let, uh, so, we, uh, so since I'm identifying G and G star, I'm going to use the same notation for the invariants. So let uh, F by tilde be beta integral of F uh, one. I uh, Okay, so now we, we have the G invariant functions, and now these elements are in the center. So then uh, these elements are uh, uh, in the center of G, but not just in the center of G, but uh, in those elements of the center, which are fixed by the action of G for group. For all one. So, and uh, this isomorphism is filtration preserving. And now, uh, using this part, we can prove that um, at the center of the Lie algebra is generated by the SFI tildes. any element and we apply uh, we apply this beta and then we know beta is in this ring in this ring but we can lift uh, any any generator involved there but we can lift the P center and we already lifted S1. So therefore we can subtract this element because it's already in our ring and then by induction we know that everything is generated and smaller. So this is how you can prove it and uh, well one way to do it. And so you can see that this Milner's map <coughs> this filtration preserving is actually very important. Okay. 
uh, now uh, now we have uh, this uh, this structure moreover I can say uh, uh, moreover uh, the standard G is a three module uh, of rank e to the power L is three bases is three bases F1 tilde A1, FL tilde AL, where AI run from 0 up to P minus 1. So, stars is square brackets don't mean 3 in the right? uh, Of course not, then it's just that uh, uh, this means that uh, our ring is generated by this and this. But uh, to, to ensure that with the free module we have to restrict the limit. So it has a monomial basis of uh, finite number. Right, now, um, Weltkamp also uh, determines the relations of the center and, uh, and for that he doesn't need the assumption that P be the uh, non-positive monomial. something that I'm going to talk uh, so but then, uh, I mean well we do know what this thing is but we want to write it down because we want to present it by generators and relations and that's what we did and for that he does not require so his argument was just uh, can be repeated <coughs> so um, so this is uh, how, how it works so we have a basis say uh, x1 and uh, then I'll take a basis uh, um, of G over K, and then uh, and uh, and then remember we have this invariance F I for the uh, invariant G invariance in the symmetric algebra case, but we can also apply them in this case uh, F one P minus X one to the P X N P minus X N to the P. Uh, in fact, the span of uh, the span of this uh, element x1 to the p minus the x1 to the p powers uh, x n to the p minus x n to the p powers is isomorphic to <coughs> g, but we have to twist by uh, we have to uh, twist by Fabinius. Because this is a T-linear, so this is just a Fabinius piece. Uh, although the notation is confusing, uh, because I, I use the same uh, notation for the derived subject, so the Fabinius twist. The Fabinius twist means that uh, we just change the scalar multiplication of this case, so we just impose lambda e to the lambda to the power of 1 over t. And then, uh, and then this this math will become linear and also uh, and also G everywhere. G everywhere. So the group actually adds on adds on this span, uh, but since we erase everything to the power of p, we have to uh, change the scalar multiplication so that both maps are. Linear. Excuse me, I, excuse me, I don't understand. <coughs> Where does this span live? It lives in UG? In, this span lives, of course, in the enveloping map. UG. In right. UG, yes. So I don't understand what G1 is. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Well, uh, <coughs> so in fact, G1 is for, for any vector space V. Mm -hmm. So V is a vector space. <coughs> uh, and then we can assign to it uh, a vector space V up of 1 mm -hmm. plus minus. Ah, like three. that. Yeah, which is called the Frobenius twist. So as I said, it's just the same V, and vector addition does not change. The only thing that we change, we change this. We change uh, scalar multiplication, so the axioms of a vector space still are satisfied. But the uh, advantage of this, although it's confusing, I have to say, but the advantage is that it, it makes P linear maps linear. So, so, so this is what I want. 
Something that actually will appear later. So uh, now, since these things are geometry variant, they are isomorphic. Now this element belongs to not just belongs to Z of G, but it belongs to the invariance of the center under the group. Because all these functions f i are G invariant. So what we have is that uh, when we apply the same f i's but on new vectors here, the result will be here. The result will be here. Yeah, but of course, but these are independent variables. So these are just polynomials. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, F I. This was exactly the same for SL2. What, remember, for SL2, we had xy plus 4z. That's exactly of this type. So this is just a Casimir for, uh, for e to the p, f to the p, h, b minus h. OK? So this is just a special special example of, the, of, this, of this expression, the file of uh, x to the p, because, well, in this case, the p-center is just generated by three elements. And, and if you remember, x was p to the p, y was f to the p, etc. <coughs> is that OK? So they are, in fact, in the p variance of the p-center. Yes, that's what I wrote, didn't I? Oh, thank oh, you very much. Oh, yeah, that, that was, uh, yeah, that I actually omitted. So this, this is very important. So they, they, they are invariants of the p-center, yeah. But, uh, Excuse me, can you uh -huh. express a better that example that you wrote? Because, uh, <coughs> you know, in that example, uh -huh. your fi is a c. Yes, fi is c, the Casimir, the Casimir element of What is x1 c. to the p minus x1 to the square p? What is it there? Well, c is just uh, the generator of, uh, of k s of <coughs> Right. <upper coughs> the Casimir element. Mm -hmm. And when you apply, well, you can apply just formally to this element. And then you obtain an element which we denote it like this, if you remember. Yes. So that's what it is. Now, uh, since we have this condition, uh, since we observe that this belongs to invariance of the p-center, so hence, uh, uh, we can write the phi of uh, x1 to the t minus x1 to the t power, etc. x n to the t minus x n to the t power. And this will be equal to some polynomials, which are difficult to compute, of x1 tilde uh, <coughs> for some <coughs> for some polynomials as I say uh, in L variable C1 here. And this polynomial, was, <coughs> well, if you remember, we actually computed it for SL2, it was pretty complicated. So, now, and this holds for all i. And so, uh, what uh, Weltkamp proved, so what he proved is, uh, uh, is that uh, the center of G is isomorphic to uh, as a ring, just as a ring, to, uh, to the quotient of a polynomial ring, say y1, yn, and I will add c1, cl. So there are n plus l generators subject to these relations, f i, uh, let me just to save the space, I will just write down the stopple for y1 by n minus si of t. 
So these are the defining relations of the Tesson Hauser variety. So and this this should call for all I uh, ranging from one up to L. And this is a complete intersection. Is a complete intersection. In the five space A n plus n, given by L equation of this type. Yes. yes. You, when you write S i of variables and variables t of variables uh, of variables at one at all, uh, you have the same letters for the arguments of the side as for coordinates and vectors. Is it related? Uh, no. Well, okay. 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 Well, okay.
Right, so uh, Gelfand and Krilov prove this uh, for SLN and GLN. You mean n minus n parentheses divided by uh, Yeah, one, uh, n minus, uh, yeah. Um, so first counterexample was, was constructed by uh, Alev, Wums, and Vandenberg in early 90s, but not for simple Lie algebras, for, uh, for the so-called semi-direct products. So there was no counterexample uh, for simple Lie algebras <coughs> outside type A. And then, uh, so what I, I observed uh, quite recently that uh, uh, if uh, uh, if this uh, conjecture holds uh, <coughs> uh, for for simple Lie algebra over complex numbers, which has the same type as as the Lie algebra G we had before, uh, then then it holds uh, for for G for uh, for all uh, for all P such is very big. One doesn't know how big they are, but it's not really a big part. And this actually uh, holds in a very large uh, for a very large class <coughs> of Nasserian rings. Uh, okay, so then uh, if the uh, if the Gelfand Kirillov uh, conjecture holds now in characteristic P, and this implies that uh, the center the field of fractions uh, of the center, so we already have notation of pure G, is purely transcendental uh, over, over the field of invariance, pure G alpha G, which is just the fractions of Z of G alpha. Um, then, uh, by results of Tangier, so here Tangier, Tangier's result implies that, uh, uh, that, that means that uh, the invariance uh, so K of, uh, of G is pure over, over the ring of invariance, over the field of invariance. And in characteristic zero, this was shown to be false. So, for a uh, <coughs> sorry, what does it mean pure? Pure is purely transcendental. Okay. So for GC, uh, this doesn't hold always, uh, which which follows from a recent result. Uh, so this uh, this frames. Uh, this Excuse me, what KG? What is K you do not define KG? Sorry? What is KG? Rational function. Uh, field ah, of rational functions on the real. Thank you. Mm Uh, no, 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 let me tell you, but for GC, this actually fails in the following cases. Uh, for G of type, so it fails in types, uh, now they are in characteristic P, yes, at the moment. But for GC, this fails in types PN, where N is bigger than equal to 3, uh, ZN, well, of course, N is bigger than equal to 4, PN is 67, maybe can type 4. Uh, it, it is true in type C and, and in type G2, which was proved recently. So this is a result of uh, Kalyot, Telen, uh, Kuniarski, Popov, and Treishtein. So one can generalize, so the same, the same holds also for G uh, when P is B. But in fact, it doesn't even have to be very big, so under very mild things. So hence, this implies that uh, so when you say the same holds in fields, 
yes, the same coefficient. Uh, there's not period difference in that. And GK itself fails uh, in time. Uh, in, in these types, which I indicated. So the first open case is uh, still for the Gelfand Grillo conjecture is uh, SP for C, where you don't know whether conjecture is, called, whether it's true or not. So, but I also used uh, somewhat similar approach, but it was more involved in the time to talk about it, to just prove Joseph's version of Gelfan uh, Taylor of Uh-huh. So what you need is that QG is isomorphic to, to KG twist, isn't it? The second statement there, right? QG no, but it does not affect invariance. You need, you need an equivariant isomorphism between QG and... I do, but I didn't have time to talk. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are some things which I didn't say. You're right. <coughs> yes, one has to freeze the action, but this does not affect invariance. Yeah, okay, but it's easy enough to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I guess just one last thing that I wanted to say about uh, the center uh, is the following result. So, uh, uh, we take uh, let uh, I be e, uh, is a linear function on G associated with a new quadrant. <coughs> this is the most interesting case because the general case can be reduced to the new quadrant case. <coughs> so then, so we have uh, canonical uh, epimorphism. The general case of what? The general case from chi could be x. Well, the linear function could be associated with any x in G. But I'm talking about the case when it is new code. So, and we have a canonical epimorphism from you. Uh, no, I, I finished this one. Okay. Uh, I'm just uh, mentioning another result, uh, which just tells you how complicated actually the center can be. So, the, the <coughs> well, u is just a. Uh, Washington algebra of that thing by some ideal i chi. And then, so the question is, uh, well, let's call, let's call this phi chi, a canonical homomorphism. So the question is, what is uh, phi chi of, of the center? So where does it go under this map? Because this is a finite dimensional associative algebra. And so this is going to be finite dimensional as well. And what is the dimension? So very interesting <coughs> questions arise. And so uh, the following uh, holds um, of the theorem is the dimension of. Uh, uh, so I will call this uh, before I state it. So let, let us call it uh, uh, that part of G. Uh, That part of G, let's denote this image. So then uh, the following theorem called uh, or proposition. So first of all, the dimension of uh, of the chi of G is equal to P to the L. So it's independent. On, in fact, this holds actually for any chi. Uh, uh, for any chi in G star. But, but the second part only holds for chi no point. So, so the dimension is independent of the choice of, uh, of chi. But the structure of this thing will be dependent. So as algebras, it has a form of isomorphism. So that part of G is isomorphic to uh, algebra direct sum of partial coinvariance. So we have uh, ST 
W lambda <coughs> over STW. Okay. So each of these algebras a partial or invariant algebra is a local ring, of course. Now what is lambda? So lambda runs over, uh, over all orbits uh, of the following. Uh, so what is, now I have to explain what this capital lambda is. And capital lambda is uh, the set of all um, linear functions on T, all linear functions on T, such that uh, lambda of x uh, to the P is equal to lambda of x to the P. Maybe it's like T here. Uh, or T in uh, This is, uh, <coughs> this is um, a, a subspace of a finite field. So uh, there's a vector space of cytomorphic So it doesn't depend on kind at all. That's what, that's what I wanted to say. That's the reason I introduced, uh, I said that it's important. Because in general, it's field dependent. Yes. When it is important, it's independent. That's correct. Yes. So now <coughs> I, I'm introducing this form, and I'm going to create the dual space where CFP uh, is a set of all toral elements in uh, N C. So all elements. Remember, an element is called toral if it has this property. It's easy to the P and uh, it's easy to prove. Actually, a good exercise. Uh, so, uh, sorry, C is a, is a form, FP form. Uh, so it's isomorphic to CFP, tensor uh, over P, like here. So, which means this is a finite vector space for, over FP, and it has a basis of that space. For instance, it contains elements H alpha, but H alpha for any root alpha, this element is storm. So uh, that means the uh, shelf belongs to C. Just as an example. But it may contain something else from the center of the reality. So <coughs> well, we have this, uh, this theorem. And, uh, I should say that this is uh, the direct sum of algebra. So the components here pairwise multiply to zero. Excuse me, so mm -hmm. T, FP can be regarded as the FP points uh, of T as... Yes, as well, not quite, not, but it's not just notation of it. I know it's a notation, not but could that be regarded as? It could be regarded as FP points, precisely, yes. If you look at the uh, at Lie algebra that is defined over FP, yes, that okay. would be... Thank yes. you. And uh, to prove this, one has to use uh, a result of uh, Steve Donkin. So uh, what one has to use, one has to take uh, the regular functions on the group, the regular functions on the group, and then one has to look at uh, infinitesimal invariance. So in the group case, we don't prove that this is uh, um, a direct sum of direct sum, which is a non-obvious statement of k of g well, as a as a kg of p model. And in this proof, don't can realize on some earlier work of Kotinin. So, of course, <coughs> there is a huge difference between K of G and K of the Lie algebra. So, and then one has to go to completion. Uh, one has to go to completion. So, uh, we complete uh, uh, so we take formal power series over G, and this is isomorphic to our completion. Uh, of this uh, 
reconvert our functions with respect to the maximal ideal m or the maximal ideal uh, which consists of all functions such that which varies from my best such that f of e is zero. Are you explaining how to put it? Sorry? What are you explaining? How to put it? Yes, I, I, I'm just trying to explain why this, this holds. So okay. to prove this, uh, one has to well, pass, one has to use this result which only calls for groups. Can I, can I ask And this is GFM. Mm -hmm. Chi is important in your formula. Yes. Uh, in, the, in the second uh, part, in this state, part two, it has to be important. Uh -huh. In general, one can say what it is, but there will be more blocks. Okay. If it's semi-simple, you will have just, it, it, it's a semi-simple algebra, just uh -huh. direct sums of fields. Uh -huh. So the whole thing just becomes trivial when chi is regular semi-simple. Uh -huh. um, so, so, so this implies the statement below? Yes, but, uh, so we use, we use this one, and then we, uh, we, do, we, we complete, and then this, this is a way to pass from the group to the real algebra. And since we're only interested in finite portions of that in this state, that turns out to be a <laughs> It's actually, you can, should, is lambda the same thing as the p restricted weights? Yeah. Yes, it, one could, I could also say that these are things, uh, yeah, well, but not over the yeah, it's the, it can be identified with a set of p restricted weights, except that p restricted weights have coefficients in Z. But these are coefficients in FP. But as I said, as I said, yes. So I have a question. Why do you have to go all the way to the, that completion? Can't you take, you know, the smaller convergent ones? Uh, no, there is no meaning. In characteristic P. I characteristic, no I see. Uh -huh. That is the problem. Yeah. Okay. Right, well, we still have a couple of minutes. Maybe I should just begin with the obvious interest. Sorry, this one. No, it's a, it, it, it's a paper which uh, <coughs> Steve Donkin wrote and it's published in Journal of Polonais. Yeah. And also it is based on earlier work of Kotti. It's a non-trivial mm -hmm. Because this seems to be like, yeah, I should also say that this, that chi of G, of course, yeah, maybe this is where I, that's a little bit a good place to finish this part. Uh, just a remark which also Jordi asked uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, um, just a note. <coughs> so uh, of course, that chi of, uh, of G is a sub-ring uh, in the center of U chi of G. And the structure of the center is a great mystery. One doesn't know what it is, but it also depends on chi. So uh, <coughs> one does not know in general, uh, one doesn't know. What this center is, what is that of the current is. And uh, well, just to see how non-trivial it is, I'll just uh, uh, give us one exercise for you. Uh, try to compute uh, the center of uh, restricted enveloping algebra of S on uh, So in this case, chi is e. It's just three-dimensional Lie algebra, and uh, so of course, u0 of SO2 is just uh, u of SO2. Uh, and we factor out the ideal generated by d to the p, f to the p, and h to the p minus h. And it's a cop algebra of dimension p u, so not a big thing. But already in this case, you will see that uh, <coughs> uh, that, that, that is just a small part of the whole thing. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, this is uh, the only case where one can compute, one can, where one can say exactly what the center is. Maybe let's have a seven minutes break because it's
it's a good time, but because I'm going to start the next paragraph. The, the isomorphism is as a ring. Sorry? The is this, this is a ring isomorphism. It is under these conditions. It is, this follows from the major rules. Somewhat similar to what Vera mentioned uh, in uh, the lecture. And it's uh, ranked right. It's, um, so let me be brief at, at the beginning, because it's a long story. So okay, let, well, first of all, it all works for any finite dimensional restricted reality. Uh, again. Um, why restricted? I mean, Algebra. And, uh, and that uh, well, view of how we are going to change notation because this is a notation of three bundle partials, so it's just uh, u0, what we called earlier u0. So the restricted environment. I'm going to introduce what's called the Ioannetta algebra. Um, so as a vector space, it's just a direct sum of all uh, even x groups over u of l is a Hopf algebra. K is a trivial L module. And uh, now it fits by Frobenius minus 1. So the step <coughs> These are vector spaces, and uh, uh, the scalar multiplication will be just instead of multiplying by lambda, will be multiplied by lambda to the power two, <coughs> not by lambda to the power one or C P as before. So you, you will see why. Uh, yeah, I is given to zero. When you say the street in the you mean by the character type of zero? Yes, precisely. That's why I wrote zero. And also, there is another notation which Janssen prefers. It. Uh, UP of mm -hmm. So there are several notations. The same thing. Well, uh, this is an algebra, and uh, uh, I think Gerson had that proof in, in day six that it's commuted. So, and the product is given by concatenation of extensions and passing to equivalence classes. And uh, if you want to, commutativity is non trivial, but uh, there is a proof uh, in the appendix to the paper why Ginsburg and Kuma, which can be found on the web. As a proof is well, five pages, maybe. So the, um, uh, another, uh, another thing is that this is uh, uh, a commutative, which is the first one of this thing. Um, this is a commutative algebra. And what's more surprising, it is finitely generated. by Friedlander and Parshall. <coughs> of course, um, like two minus one is not being used. Yes. Now, but it is not by one. No, it's a little. Uh, what they had before was lambda to the one of this one to the power. So that's why it's minus one. <coughs> Um, right, so therefore um, we can attach to it um, an algebraic variety, which is a conical variety, so it's a maximal spectrum. Sorry, is the same uh -huh. twist on all the vector spaces? Yes. All the top of the same twist? Uh, yes, we, we, well, we just we put the twist on the whole thing, yes, yeah. on this infinite dimensional vector. Yes. Yeah. And the reason for that will be clear now, actually. So uh, now uh, there is a mark. Uh, so you mentioned just a cover. What what it has to do with this? Commutative. Well, but it's not clear whether this algebra is commutative because well, at least to me, it requires a proof. Uh, uh, and it's not so easy to find. But the best way uh, to see to see the proof is I think Ginsburg Kumar. 
Um, now, there is a map. Uh, linear map, and that's why it fits from the dual space to y of n. In fact, it, it actually goes to x2 to kk, uh, given by the following uh, rule. It, it, it was introduced by Hochschild long ago, given by, by the following rule. So we need to assign, uh, so we take uh, any phi a linear function on, a, on L, and then we assign to it an extension, so then, uh, and set, uh, so we take L cat phi. It's, it's going to be a Lie algebra, and the Lie algebra it will be just L plus uh, K1, where 1 is a central element. It's a um, Complete Lie algebra extension, but with this restrict, uh, re restriction. Remember that they, they have some degree of freedom in defining uh, this power map here. So we define it as follows: one to the power of p zero. So we impose that this is important, which we can because it's central, and we also say that uh, x to the power uh, p, and this p depends on the power. <coughs> So I'm twisting the piece bar so that it depends on this linear function, and this will be the old piece bar plus uh, phi of x to the e one. In order uh, for all x in f, for all x uh, in f. So therefore, uh, we have a restricted Lie algebra, and. Um, the extension is split just as ordinary algebra, but not as a restricted algebra. And so therefore we have, to this we correspond, uh, uh, to this file we have, we have this, this extension, so we have zero, I think goes to k, this goes to uh, f5, and this goes to f5, and this goes to k. So here, so here the direct sum of the direct sum of of the algebra, but not of restriction. So to this we, we, we attach an extension, and, and the class of this extension will be next to uh, unit of okay. okay, so it's just a linear map. I'm not, so, I'm not saying that it is injective or whatever. It could be zero up the way. So uh, and actually it can be zero. And then, uh, so what we have, so this gives rise uh, this gives rise to algebra of common law. It's an exercise. An exercise. That's an exercise. Uh, try to decipher this. Yes. Uh, uh, no, it's a very natural one. Uh, this is an exercise. We find the yes, yes, yes. So, uh, <coughs> Uh, so this gives rise to an algebra homomorphism. So since we embedded uh, L star, then we have uh, the symmetric algebra S of L star will go to uh, the Vionet algebra. And that's the reason we twisted by Fabinius, yeah. so that everything becomes simple. Right, okay, so uh, then, uh, uh, so let's call this now phi uh, star because uh, so let phi star phi from the Yonid algebra uh, of from the corresponding maximal spectrum. Did I define it? Yes. From the spectrum of Yonid algebra to uh, star uh, B is a common. And here is the first result. Uh, then, uh, uh, well, Janssen and Friedland and Parshall prove that this is a finite morphism, in fact, it could also be digested. Uh, uh, is, is a finite morphism. That's all we need. Uh, finite morphism has a property that they, they take closed subset to closed subset. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, it's a finite morphism. And uh, Janssen computed the image for GLM and then the general case was done by Friedman and Parshall. So the image 
of, of this cohomological support is going to be the restricted null code, not the whole null code, but it consists of all elements x in L such that x will be easy. So you want L? L is our real restricted real. Sorry? But in phi, you go to L, though. Pardon me? Phi should land in L, oh, yeah. not in L stuff. Uh, oh, yes, in L. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, OK. Yes, so uh, it should be L. And therefore, we take this. Uh, so this leads to L. So the image uh, now <coughs> is known. Uh, so now, uh, now we can attach uh, uh, support variety to any uh, module. Now, Friedener and partial observe that you can do it um, for any uh, p card, not just in the restricted case, but for any p card. Yeah, but Weyerfeld is a much larger. Sorry? Weyerfeld is a much larger. Um, yeah, well, in many cases, actually, uh, isomorphic to the functions on the new problem contour, not always. So um, now let try the uh, so let M be any uh, L module is P part of chi. Now start chi the arbitrary. <coughs> well then, freedom uh, and partial probe that the Yoneda algebra uh, acts on. Uh, on this thing, so you can still have uh, these extensions to i, i give it to, to zero, you will fail, but here I have uh, m L <coughs> minus one. The point is that uh, what really matters here is, uh, is this tensor product, and this is a restricted module. So therefore, this is actually well defined. So one, one, one uses this part, but this is restricted. That means that has p cards are zero. So, and that let... Uh, uh, by any, you mean finite dimensional? Well, uh, yes, for any, uh, well, finite dimensional, yes. It, this will be our case. Uh, then, um, so let j of m be... Uh, uh, is the annihilator of this action. So they prove that this is a finite module actually of over over the middle algebra. So we have annihilator of this section. And uh, and let uh, L of M uh, the corresponding Close subset, uh, the set of all z common zeros, uh, the set of zeros of this. This is, of course, an ideal in the young analogy uh, in the cohomological support yeah. And that's a closed conical subset in here. And then we introduce um, uh, the support variety of this module, so we have a M. We, we, uh, we apply this phi, uh, which I introduced earlier, uh, to, to this right. Uh, and this is a closed conical subset in the new bottom cone. JL is a mediator, it's a subset of one. Subset of all uh, <coughs> elements which act trivially on this axis. So subset of y. Yes. So, uh, um, so this is a close conical uh, subset of uh, NP of n. And so, um, the reason uh, why this is very important uh, is the following result, which somewhat resembles what Vera uh, mentioned in her talk. Uh, so first of all, uh, mm. well, 
proposition of uh, Friedman and Parshall. Okay, so M is, uh, is projected over uh, UI of L different on the if the corresponding variety is zero. That's the first one. Now, um, I will also need, yeah, well, although I'm, I'm not going to use this, but just uh, let me mention it. Here, when you tensor and and n, so this, suppose that this has p character chi, and this has p character chi prime, and it's a good exercise, although very easy, to show that this tensor product will have p character chi plus chi chi in this case. So therefore, this still applies to this tensor product, and the variety will be intersection of this. So it becomes, it gets smaller when you tensor. So, so M is uh, here, M has P character chi, and then has P character chi prime. So we have this tensor product in position. Um, yeah, if M is a submodule, if M is uh, a submodule, And uh, then we have inclusion of uh, support varieties. something by uh, a subring in degree uh, one or, or two. Uh -huh. 
and it turns out to be a finite module. So the whole thing is a finite module over this number. <coughs> finite module. That's all I want to say in general. So although this is all very nice, but uh, there is also a description. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so the statement phi is uh, can be uh, can be formulated by saying that the support variety is just the same as ramp variety. So here is a description of for this thing. So the L of M is uh, is the set of all x in uh, N P of M. So we take all the important elements <coughs> of all your potency class such that V uh, is not free as a, a U chi of X mod. I will introduce this in a uh, moment. <coughs> oh, sorry, M. 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 Our module M is not free. So the whole thing is now. I, I need to introduce this bit. So because x belongs to NP, this <coughs> is just a truncated polynomial ring in one layer. So in characteristic two, it will become precisely what we are mentioning. Right, so here, <coughs> Uh, new chi, yeah. new chi of x is uh, is a case about the uh, of new chi of L of this z algebra well generated by x. Generated by x. So if x is not zero, well the case when x is zero is not very interesting. Uh, if x is uh, not zero, then uh, uh, this algebra is isomorphic to the truncated polynomial in, in one way. And this isomorphism goes like this. So x goes to x, uh, sorry, uh, <coughs> x minus pi of x will go to this capital X. This is how it is. Uh, and the reason for that is we have one Kerber Goff theorem for U chi, and you can include the sets into a monomial basis from which this will, will be clear immediately. So it couldn't be any smaller. So what does this theorem say? So it's just uh, that it's a very strong <coughs> local projectivity uh, criteria and it says that uh, the module is projective. So what is it, what sorry, is it different from zero. There? Sorry, different. What is different from zero? X. 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 X
uh, over this deep algebra, if and only if it is projective for free over this small sub algebra. Oh, for all of them, yes, well, except zero. Zero, we don't need more. The group acts on this one. There is no group in general. It, it is true for any restricted algebra. In fact, this was recently generalized by Friedlander and Susli and Petzova in the case of uh, finite group schemes, uh, finite dimensional cofamines of all points. But in that case, it is harder to define for support horizon. So, uh, For us, it will be important to, uh, to determine the following thing. Um, so, okay. Uh, <coughs> so, if it's chi, uh, maybe it's the second part of it, uh, then I'll start and um, so let, let us take uh, all simple, all irreducible modules for u chi and let uh, D1, ES, uh, ES, D all irreducible uh, new kind of uh, modules by one twice a multi. There are finite many of them because they have a finite dimension of it, right? Um, so, and now we define uh, the support variety uh, <coughs> for the category of finite dimensional modules is a fixed character, so a title denoted by PL uh, uh, of chi. And that's going to be the union of, uh, of support for all simple modules like right? this. So you take the union of all uh, here. Of course, in general, it will be hopeless to determine this, this number s and to say anything about the i. But we still can uh, consider this. Uh, so this is a closed subset, uh, a closed clinical subset. Of NP and, uh, and so we know that by part uh, I said by part three of this proposition, uh, the support variety of any module, finite dimensional module, is contained in uh, the L of chi for any uh, finite dimensional U chi L module. And that's the reason for introducing uh, this thing. Uh, in general, I have no idea what it is, but it, this has a very nice description uh, for a very large class of uh, restricted fields. And there is a general uh, result that I proved, uh, but it's not very illuminating. So there is a proposition Yeah, so I, I think I wrote this in my day. So we have um, for any finite dimensional real, real algebra, for any chi, so this, this is going to be the support variety of the following restricted module. So we take u chi of L and we regard it uh, as a joint action. So, uh, so this is a, a restricted uh, L module, and the action is given by x uh, of x by u is going to be x u minus u x. So for all u in u So as a vector space, it's just u pi of L, but we, we use a joint action. And it is a, uh, this module has key character zero, not, not hard to see. And not really hard to prove, but since we don't know what the prior is, there is no hope to, to say what this module is. 
However, we have this Milner's mark. It is pi character zero. Or Sorry, this has or oh, oh, this module has pi character zero. Yes. For any whatever chi is, but uh, this becomes restricted because we well the three fraction like this. Yes. So now, uh, how can we simplify this? <coughs> okay. Um, so now we define. Uh, so k is equal to zero is called n b. So k is equal to zero is called n b. No, this holds for any part. No, but if k is equal to zero, yes, b l zero. Yeah, that, that's will be just zero here, the joint module. For and, and that is called n b. That will be on all p, yes, no. because we have augmentation idea. So you can split k, yeah. Precisely, yes. yes. So let J chi be the ideal, um, uh, uh, ideal of the symmetric algebra <coughs> uh, of L uh, generated by By this one, so you take uh, x minus pi of x. This is two for proposition. No, no, no. The proposition is finished. Uh, now I'm trying to, uh, in some cases, well, this is too complicated. I'm just trying to replace it by something else, which is more manageable. So generated by uh, by the elements for all for all x and l. So, uh, and then, and we said a scalar file to be the quotient algebra. So it's just S of L divided by this idea. Yes. Yes. So this is a local algebra of dimension P uh, to the dimension of L. And then uh, uh, the sky of L is a local algebra of dimension e to the power of dimension of L. Uh, and uh, uh, and X in this algebra the sky of L, we are the joint representation. The reason for that is that uh, the derivations uh, annihilate these powers. And so therefore, this idea is going to be stable under all uh, elements other. So it is stable under all uh, derivations. So the maximal ideal, uh, the maximal ideal of, uh, well, let's call it M, maybe. The uh, end of the uh, spiral part is generated by my own elements x minus one. <coughs> is it clear why it is local? Yes, because uh, this idea has co dimension one, and all these elements, when you raise them to the power of p, will okay. yeah. vanish. Yeah. Right. So now we have. Uh, now let us uh, return uh, to the Lie algebra of reductive group under our assumptions. Now let's see what they can say. So now suppose. Again, G is the real algebra of the reductive group. Um, and uh, the same assumptions on, on G and P. Then we have uh, this map beta, uh, which is induced by Milner's map. 
So then uh, we have uh, <coughs> we have this map data from uh, uh, from u of g to s of g, and there is a formula for it which I I, I wrote last time. So to some extent. Uh, one can keep track of what this thing does. It, it's some sort of symmetrization, but there is more to it because so there this is, is a, Milner map? Yeah. Yes, it involves Milner map. Yeah. And then projects into mm -hmm. uh, yes. So and then one can prove uh, a proposition that uh, that for any chi uh, for any chi in which is star uh data takes this idea of I chi. I chi is the defining idea of reduced envelopment algebra. It, uh, it will go to the symmetric algebra, it takes it to J. So, and for that one, it's really just a combinatorial uh, proof. So it's a nice map, and so it does nice things to this idea. So hence, uh, so hence, um, I chi is the idea defining U, U chi. Yes, yes, precisely. So hence, uh, beta induces uh, an isomorphism of half G modules which I will also denote by well, uh, U uh, chi G R something that uh, we really want. Uh, and uh, as chi of G. And this is this local ring which is uh, acted by the real algebra as derivations. So, as a corollary, uh, we now can, um, we now can, yes, yeah, simplify our distinction of P chi of L. So corollary. <coughs> so therefore we have P um, chi of L. But as we know the case is just P chi of uh, uh, sorry, P chi of G now. It's, it's the only case where I can use it. Uh, U chi of G R. And this is equal to a support variety of uh, uh, oh, sorry, L. Or G. G of yeah, it should be G. Uh, and here we have G of S chi of G. Of course, we, which raises the question uh, of what this thing is. It should be somewhat simpler than what we had before. And here we will uh, probably we don't have time to prove this. So here okay, we have a proposition. Um, the proposition is that the support variety of this module for any chi. This is just uh, again an important point, but not on G, but just on the stabilizer. On the stabilizer uh, where so let me remind you G chi is uh, the restricted sub that consists of all x and g, uh, such as chi vanishes on, on the image. Okay. And this is equal to, of course, uh, there's a stabilizer of x if, if chi is equal to x, if, if chi is associated with some now, uh, so this would be very useful to know. But then uh, K is important to bring in. For any In fact, this statement, I could, I could state it for any restricted algebra. Maybe I should have done. Uh, maybe I should have done. So in fact, we can replace this by any restricted algebra there because I'm going to use it later on. Uh, so I will put L here, L5, and I should change this by L. So 
So this statement is very general and doesn't require it. But of course, this is no longer true. So we now have just projects that work. What is no longer true? Because G is not, L is not always isomorphic to L star. What is no longer true? Uh, uh, well, uh, no. this, this, this statement holds for any restricted algebra. But in our special case, So um, let's try to prove one, one direction is, uh, is fairly easy. Right, so suppose uh, uh, we need to prove uh, so the supervisor called joint representation. Yeah, precisely. So let's suppose that suppose we have x in, in the stabilizer uh, in L car. We want to show that this belongs to the support variety. Well, let's see. Uh, now we have uh, then the, the composition uh, the composition uh, S chi of, of L, which is just identity plus M chi plus M. M is a maximal ideal. Is then uh, Rx stable. So if you take uh, an element in the stabilizer, uh, well, we, we know that chi vanishes on uh, uh, chi of uh, x, y minus chi of y is going to be 0 for all y. And therefore, since x acts as derivation, it will preserve this maximum. It will take everything uh, to. Uh, so that, that actually means that uh, uh, this actually, actually means that x lies non in the So when we apply, uh, so m is generated by, by the things of this type. When we break it in, uh, uh, we don't need to subtract chi of x y because it's zero. So therefore, it is still uh, therefore it is the most there. So therefore, uh, uh, this implies that chi of x has uh, at least one at least one Jordan block of size one. And that's a Jordan block corresponding to this element because it's going to annihilate it. And there will be some Jordan blocks here, but we already found one. So therefore, uh, how do we know that uh, it doesn't achieve this? Well, it, it may have some other Jordan blocks, but we already found one. <coughs> therefore, it's not free. <coughs> so why? It, well, it, for, it, this, now let me what finish. You, X, 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 Belongs to the support variety at uh, at time of S i. Uh, so we found at least one uh, Jordan block of size one, but, but in order for X not to be here, all Jordan blocks have size p, must have size p. We already found one which has size less than p, and that's more than enough. For for X not to be here, uh, it's, uh, this module has to be free over the algebra generated by this. So all Jordan blocks must have size p. But this is not the case because in, uh, this one dimensional subspace is a direct sum. <coughs> no, but, but this is an easier part. So now, uh, suppose now, um, now we have an element which does not belong. Now suppose that x does not belong to uh, np of, uh, well, it's enough to assume it does not belong to l to the stabilizer. 
lambda 0 v plus q 0 plus add access derivations and this just uh, multiplies our ideal Oof. I think I mix this up again because I, I really want text but well, maybe it will work also in this case um, because I actually I, I had to apply add y So, and then when we apply this thing, then we get uh, that, uh, mm. that I, I'm sure I mix things up. I will have to correct it nicely. Uh, uh, and Q will be, will be congruent to, uh, I think, K, uh, K y minus chi of y to the power k minus 1 to k more the ideal generated by 1 y minus chi of y to the power k. Uh, yeah, just by uh, this ideal raised to the power k. And so therefore it is not 0. But I'm afraid I'm cheating. Left hand side uh -huh. is zero. No? Sorry? The left hand side is zero. Uh, the left hand side will be zero, of course, yes. Yeah. So that's a contradiction. Yeah. But the right hand side, you claim the right hand side is different from zero. 
Yes, but uh, that's a contradiction because we are assuming suppose q0 is not, uh, <coughs> so, uh, suppose q0 is 0. Yes. If q0 is 0, we can actually reach a contradiction by applying certain algorithm. But, but for this, I think to work, one has to uh, replace y by x again and then apply odd y rather than odd x. Yes. Correct. But this is more or less how it works. But why is it wrong, this argument? Sorry? I don't understand why the argument is wrong. Maybe it's not wrong, but this is not how I put it. But maybe I just managed to. It could, but you think it's not wrong? <laughs> I didn't see any problem. Well, I mean, if there is no complaint. <laughs> well, if there are complaints, I will come up with another proof. There is another proof, and you replace y by x, but here you have to apply add y with this thing. And then you compute more this idea. So, so uh, the meaning of this, so therefore, uh, but if you apply add y, you go to t. Yeah, because, yeah, I thought it was taken to be in the kernel of that x. The kernel of that x? Yeah, x. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, okay, so you okay. Can't okay. switch to y. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. I have yeah, to. Yeah, you have to switch. Yes, I have to use other x. Yeah, okay, yes. So, um, maybe. So, this, this means that uh, q0 is not 0. Uh, and that means the projection, the projection. Uh, uh, from the kernel uh, of uh, x, the projection of <coughs> from this vector space uh, to, uh, to the span of, I'm sorry, to the subalgebra generated by, to v, by v1, vm minus 1, or the projection is injected. Is injected. So since it is injective, and this, this thing has dimension uh, has dimension p to the power n minus 1, because as vi is to the power p, it becomes scalar. So the dimension of the corner of uh, of Rx is then less than or equal to p n minus 1. However, Rx uh, to the p is 0. Uh, since, uh, since we have that uh, Ix to the power p is 0, and dimension of this kernel uh, Rx should have, uh, the dimension should be bigger than the just by looking at Jordan blocks of this array. So we must have equality. So the equality must go. So this means that the uh, uh, kernel of uh, objects is precisely the dimension p to the n minus 1. And this implies that all Jordan blocks, all Jordan blocks, all objects, And that implies that uh, X does not belong to the support uh, And that, that completes the proof. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, that's good. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I hope I, I didn't uh, mess this thing up. Um, I have a question from way back from the previous, before yeah. the break. Uh -huh. So there was this reason that um, the map to the invariant should be purely transcendental. That but yes, if, ah, from, you, you mean this Jolf uh, and Kirillov conjunction? Yeah. Uh, it, well, the reason for that is, uh, yes, uh, when, we, um, when we reduce the Y algebra mod P, the Y algebra is generated by X1, Xn, and the one relative. And the characteristic is that, of course, these elements will be central. Uh, the one with the P will be the center of the 
this. And uh, and write exactly M. Uh, and, um, and the whole algebra will be prime over this. I mean, so this, it's easy to prove that this is precisely the center of the wild algebra and characteristic. So if uh, these elements are M of them, and they are algebraically independent when you are, that since they are algebraically independent, when you add also um, the, uh, the index, so yeah, I guess, two of G alpha G, uh, so we will see that the whole center is generated by these things and Q of G. So it's purely transcendental over this. So in this case, M actually is, in fact, it's dimensional G uh, minus L over T. Minus minus so if the Gelfand Taylor conjecture holds, then this one algebra will supply us in this generation scale. So that I can not be.